Who's your person? My person is my grandma. Um, her name is Nettie or was Nettie. She died when I was 14 uh, and she was sort of like Jesus in a Jewish family. Um, if my parents ever wanted me to eat anything that I didn't want to eat, they would say, you know, well, this is grandma's favorite food. Um, even though grandma's favorite foods were generally um, tongue and borscht and cow. I am a vegetarian now. Really? You're a veggie, but yeah. no, no, I am. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's too much brain as a child, you know. It's... She is uh, buried in a bright red suit. You know, she was Jewish, um, but she thought that even though Jews don't believe in hell, that God would make an exception for her because of everything she had done, and so she wanted to fit in. So wow. that's why wow. she's wearing red. This is, this is like theologically, <laughs> my head is exploding. Sorry. So your grandmother was this kind of beacon of Jewish thought yes. and Jewish tradition, yeah? Mm -hmm. She was the, the latke maker. She was the one who, like, she dated Zero Mostel for a really long time. This is, <laughs> I mean, I I'm in the right crowd. Wow. Yeah. Were you funny around your grandma? Yes. I think she, um, she just associated it with intelligence. And I wanted to impress her not only by consuming massive quantities of cow brain, but <laughs> <laughs> also amusing her in some fashion. Where is your place? It's called um, St. Marie de Mont, I believe. When I was researching my novel, um, The Clasp, a lot of it takes place in, in Normandy. And uh, more specifically, my place is this house that was on Windmill by the Sea Road. It was owned by these uh, this couple, these two guys, and one of them did the window displays for Colette, which is a very fancy department store in Paris. And you could tell <laughs> there'd be like a wall of different shades of white plate that were just all over. And I'm like, why don't I do that in my house? And it had all these like very sort of subtle topiaries in the background and all in the backyard and olive trees. And it was tiny but airy and beautiful and I got so much writing done there and it's paradise and I kept thinking that um, I would go back but I never heard back from them which I was kind of disappointed by and they had sold it so oh. I can never go back which has only made it um, sharper and more magical and more important in my in my brain what's your thing my thing is a book um, it's uh, Embers by Sandor Marai. It's hard to find a Hungarian translator for a book. Um, so true. My it's constant complaint. so hard to find Hungarian translators when you these need days. One. Yeah. I know. Where is one? <laughs> the translator ended up being a woman who was also an editor at Knopf named Carol Janeway. She's like, you know, screw it, I'll do it, basically. Did um, you really speak Hungarian? No. So <laughs> here's the problem. <laughs> We've hit the crux of the problem because. She used the French translation and the German translation. So what the French did is they gave the silent guy half the lines. <laughs> and it still became a bestseller. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But of course, the Germans being German, it was very much like the Hungarian translation. It was really word for word. I work for a literary agent. And you start thinking, you know, as much as you're looking for these diamonds, well, I can do this better. But that's not a great thing to think. Whereas working no. in publicity, I found quite inspiring because Everything I saw was wonderful in its own way, even oh. if it wasn't my thing. I read Look Alive Out There and your other two books of essays also. Nowhere in the part of the book that I read was Look Alive Out There, like the actual. Is it in there? So I just thought this was the easiest way to find out, that you would definitely know. <laughs> For Look Alive Out There, uh, it is not. You're not missing anything. You don't have to read that essay. There will not be a quiz. 